This is part two, continuing on in the study of the reason we were polluted and taught the wrong things. The reason is fallen angels. The reason is their offspring. The reason is evil spirits flying around out there everywhere attempting you. Possessing people actually. Demonic possession, etc. This is the book of Jubilees. So we'll go into that. That's a different type of a book. But even so, it came to pass when the children of men began to multiply in the face of the earth, and daughters were born unto them, that the angels of God saw them on a certain year of the Jubilee. They were beautiful to look upon. They took themselves wives of all whom they chose, and they bare unto them sons, and they were giants. Lawlessness, lawlessness increased upon the earth, and all flesh corrupted its way, like men and cattle and beasts and birds and everything that walks on the earth. All of them corrupted their ways and their orders. They began to devour each other, and lawlessness increased on the earth and every imagination of the thoughts of all men. Thus evil continually. God looked upon the earth and beheld it was corrupt, and all flesh had corrupted its orders. And all that were upon the earth had wrought all manner of evil before his eyes. He said he would destroy man and all flesh upon the face of the earth, which he had created. But Noah found grace before the eyes of the Lord against the angels whom he had sent upon the earth. He was exceedingly wroth. He gave commandment to root them out of all their dominion. And he bade us to bind them in the depths of the earth. Behold, they're bound in the midst of them and are kept separate. And against their sons went forth a command from him, from before his face, they should be smitten with the sword and be removed from under heaven. He said, My spirit shall not always abide on men for their flesh, and their days should be one hundred and twenty years. Not a whole lot of people live to be a hundred and twenty, though. He sent his sword into their midst, and that he should slay his neighbor. They began to slay each other till they all fell by the sword, were destroyed from the earth. And their fathers were witnesses, so they had to watch their sons fighting each other and killing each other. That was part of the order given against him. And after this they were bound in the depths of the earth forever until the day of the great condemnation when judgment is executed on all those who have corrupted their ways and their works before the Lord. He destroyed all from their places and there is not left one of them whom he judged not accordingly to all their wickedness. He made for all his works a new and righteous nature so they should not sin in their whole nature forever. They should be all righteous each in his kind all way. The judgment of all is ordained and written on the heavenly tablets in righteousness. Even all who depart from the path which is ordained for them to walk in, and if they walk not therein, judgment is written down for every creature and for every kind. And there is nothing in heaven or on earth or in light or in darkness or in Sheol or in the depth or in the place of darkness. And all their judgments are ordained and written and engraved in regard to all he will judge, the great according to his greatness, and the small according to his smallness, each according to his way. He who is not one who will regard the person, nor is he one who will receive gifts, if he says that he will execute judgment on each. If one gave everything that is on the earth, he will not regard the gifts of the person, nor accept anything at his hands, for he is a righteous judge. And the children of Israel has been written and ordained. If they turn to him in righteousness, he will forgive all their transgressions and pardon all their sins. It is written and ordained that he'll show mercy to all who turn from all their guilt once each year. And as for all those who corrupted their ways and their thoughts before the flood, no man's person was accepted save that of Noah alone, for his person was accepted in behalf of his sons, whom God saved from the waters of the flood on his account. For his heart was righteous in all his ways, according as it was commanded regarding him, and he had not departed from aught that was ordained for him. 
And the Lord said he would destroy everything which was upon the earth, both men and cattle, and beasts and fowls of the air, and that which moveth on the earth. And he commanded Noah to make him an ark. Now you're getting into the flood. So you've already got into the book of Jubilees. And the book of Jubilees describes the same thing. I brought this up before. This is a different type of a book. This is from the Emerald Tablets of Thoth. And this describes a little bit of how they got by uh, evil spirits and such with uh, not being seen. We'll look at it once more. Far in the past, before Atlantis existed, men there were who delved into darkness using dark magic, calling up beings from the great deep below us. Forth came they into this cycle. Formless were they of another vibration. You get that telling you right there. We all have a vibration. And even back then, these guys knew it formless they were of another vibration exiting unseen by the children of earthmen only through blood could they have formed being blood sacrifices only through man could they live in the world you got a little possession going on living in a man in ages past were they conquered by masters driven below to the place whence they came but some there were who remained, hidden in spaces and plains not known to man, unknown to man. Lived they in Atlantis as shadows. At times they appeared among men. Aye, when the blood was offered, for they came to, and <laughs> for they came, they dwelt among men. In the form of men, they amongst us. But only the sight were they as men. So they took the form of us. They looked like us when we looked at them. But they were serpent-headed when the glamour was lifted, but appearing to men among men. You know, appeared to, to a man like another guy, you know, or a woman or something. They just looked like one of us. They crept into the councils, taking forms that were like unto men slaying by their arts their talents their knowledges that we didn't have the chief of the kingdoms taking their form and ruling over man looking at a guy thinking it was a man but it really wasn't only by magic could they be discovered only by sound sound vibration could their faces be seen sought they from the kingdom of shadows to destroy man and rule in his place. Just like the other guys, right? Ruling us. Eating us. But know ye, the masters were mighty in magic, able to lift the veil from the face of the serpent. Able to break that vibration. So you could see who they were. What they really were. Able to send him back to his place, came they to man and taught him the secret, the word that only a man can pronounce. Swift, then they lifted the veil from the serpent. They cast him forth from the place among men. And it goes on to say, but beware, the serpent still liveth in a place that is open at times to the world. Unseen, they walk among thee in places where the rites have been said. Again, as time passes onward, shall they take the semblance of men. Called may they be by the master who knows the white or the black. That would be magic. Black magic, white magic. But only the white master may control and bind them while in the flesh. Seek not the kingdom of shadows, for evil will surely appear. For only the master of brightness shall conquer the shadow of fear. Know ye, O my brother, that fear is an obstacle great. Be master of all in the brightness. The shadow will soon disappear. Hear ye and heed my wisdom. The voice of light is clear. Seek not the valley of shadow, and light will only appear. 
So even this old writing on an emerald tablet of Thoth describes something that's not us that we couldn't see and they were able to take a form that looked like us but they used a form of vibration, they had a different type of a vibration than a human but cloaked them like a shapeshift, you know, it got into our brains or something and made us interpret what they look like as what they wanted to project and it describes some way that we were able to break that vibrational field down and when you broke it down you could see they weren't human you see what they really were so bottom line aliens are not your friends they're not going to come and help us anything not of this world is considered alien angels can be technically considered alien because this is not their world they may have got sent here to deliver messages, they may have had a task to watch over us and help when need be, but their realm was meant to be a different realm. So they are considered alien. Now, at a certain point, whatever ones are bound under the great hills, that's where they're supposed to be bound, under the great hills. They're going to get released. And like I've said before, God uses scumbags to achieve his total overall plan because his, his plan is always a, a winner. It always comes out good in the end. And these guys, these fallen angels, these Nephilim, they're going to exact uh, part of the judgment against man. And it's not going to be a pretty thing whenever that happens. So you've got a place in the center of the earth. I assume it's in the center. Hell. And you've got some bound down there. But that is not from that fall. That is from the original war in heaven. These guys they're bound in their own special little places under the great hills. But when you understand, you know, you go all this into this Anunnaki and Sumerian stuff and everything, then you can figure out who they really were. They were angels, fallen kind. So that's how you got taught all the things wrong. That's how cultures were formed with all the wrong ideas. And that's why we're stuck in this rut all this time later on. You know, we, we, we learn what we learn. It's been a constant battle of God trying to teach right. You know, devil, evil, evil spirits and whatnot. They make a counter move. They try to teach wrong. Constant struggle and we're the prize. Read up on it. It'll open your eyes. If you don't believe it, can't help you on that. All I know is what's real. And I know these things are real. So I'm going to let you go. And God bless every one of you. I hope you can get something out of this and understand it. The links are there. You can uh, you can read for yourself. You can let it sink in. I hope you realize what happened way back then and how it's worked its way all into current day and where we're headed down the line.